Okay, so now we are going to look into the question two of the cool wipes case. So here, let's say if I'm going to clean my texts here. So then if I open my pen. So here now we are going to look into the question two where the question is that do you recommend adding any plant? So we are talking about Matt, okay? So Matt has identified these three new locations. And now the question is if Matt is going to recommend any adding any new plants. And then if so, where should the plants be built? Okay, so out of these three new locations, where should the plants be built? But here we are saying that assume that Chicago plant will be maintained at its capacity, at its current capacity, but could run at a lower utilization. Okay, so here we're saying that, okay, keep your Chicago plant open, but what about the other plants? Can you use some of the other plants and achieve a lower cost? And what would be the solution if the transportation co cost is half of its current value, all these transportation costs, if they're half of its current value, and then what if the transportation costs are double of their current value, okay? So mainly we have three parts here. So the first part is about that we consider the transportation cost as it is. And we solve it with optimization where we say that Chicago is going to be open, but we can use also some of the other plants. That's going to be the main one of the solution, the part one. Okay, and it is normally common because when we have a plant that has been open for a longer time, we suddenly don't close it. We normally keep it there for some time and then we can consider closing, okay? And then the part two will be that we then consider half of our transportation cost and how the how it affects the solution. And then we double our transportation cost and see how it affects the solution. So normally this, this double and half transportation cost consideration, this is very common as a sensitivity analysis, okay? Uh, because transportation costs that we consider now, it could go up, it could go down in the upcoming years that we might not know, but in general, we can see how it is going to affect our solution. And if there is a huge difference between the solutions, whether with the change in the transportation cost or not, okay? So now let's start with the part one of question two. So we are going to solve the problem with optimization. We consider that Chicago is open, but some other plants could be open too, okay? So let's go to our Excel file. This is what we prepared in the part one. If you haven't seen it, please have a look on the part one, how we have prepared this. But now I'm going to just copy this, duplicate one copy of this, move or copy, move to end, create a copy. So I get a copy of this and I'm going to rename it as question two, part one, okay? Here, I'm also going to do something interesting. That is uh, for my, this demand, uh, let's say this, this information with the, with the capacity. So they are in million, okay? But if you look here in the case, of, in the book, they have given it in like thousands, okay? Thousands of uh, thousands unit, okay? So I'm going to convert everything also in thousands of unit and that has a reason. One of the reason is that we don't have to bother so much about making them integer or not. In a sense that you know, you can't open a plant if only there is 10 units to be delivered from one plant to the another demand location. You, know, you don't want to produce only 10 units or something like that. You know? So when you consider in thousands, then it already means that each plant has to produce at least thousands and only then they will be considered to be open or not, okay? So we're not going to consider this demand information in thousands. So to do that, I'm simply going to, but it's not going to really affect my solution so much, uh, okay? I'm just going to reduce it to all, all the demand information. I'm going to reduce it to thousands, okay? So then 2 million becomes 2,000. One more zero, annual capacity here. Also, it all the one millions becomes one thousand. 
for cost, we can keep it as it is. Here also for the 500,000, we can make it 500. It will be 50, 700, 90, 500, 100, 120. And 800, and here it should be 6,500. See, is yeah. Here it's 1 million. So 1 million becomes 1,000, 120,100. Yeah. Here we can make a note that all de demand and capacity units are in thousands, okay? So we, we take a note for us on the top. Great. Uh, to make everything actually on the same level, because here you see the total cost is looks different than this one. So it could be a good idea also to actually make these ones also thousands, okay? So yeah, if I just actually make one of them and then two, two, it's easier to just put it like this. <laughs> and then here we have the fixed cost one, five, zero, zero. One five zero zero one five zero zero one five zero zero. So now we have this value same as what we had here. Okay, and here we can also allow it a couple of digits. Then we see it's exactly as in here, but with two more uh, multiplied with thousand. Okay, so to re get the real cost, we can just multiply it with thousand. Okay, so here we can read it like. Um, yeah, 87,961,000, okay, 961 and 400,000, yeah, 961,400, okay. So that's how we can actually read it. But anyway, it looks nice now. Now we are just going to solve it using Excel Solver, but first we are going to remove this information from here. We don't need them. Now we are going to, uh, we are going to now optimize it through the Excel Solver. So we go to data and then we go to solver and we are here. One of the first thing we have to do is we have to set our objective, which is here, the total cost. We select this cell and we are going to minimize it. By changing cell here, we put all our decision variables. So here we select all of them. Here I'm using semicolon. Some computers you have to do comma depending on the language of your computer. And here, I'm then going to select all of this, okay? So these are my decision variables. This can change, okay? To get us the optimum solution. And we are going to add the constraints. So uh, in general, I'm going to add uh, first, let's say the capacity constraint. So I select the capacity constraints, capacity left, so here, what we are basically doing is uh, one idea to look at it could be that if I clear my pen, and, uh, so here capacity left normally gives us our available capacity, capacity minus used capacity, okay. So in very simple words, if we think about it, if our capacity available is 100, the maximum that we can get in our used capacity, okay, so this is available. Maximum we can use is available. Then capacity left here would be equal to zero, okay? If we use less than our capacity, 
let's say 80, then we will get a positive value. For any value using capacity less than our what we have, we will have a positive value, right? But let's say if we try to use, if we have 100, but we try to use 120, then we will have a negative value, minus 20 of capacity left. But this situation cannot be possible because we cannot use more than our capacity, right? So here in capacity left, what we are going to do is we are just going to say that capacity left, which we select here, all of it, okay? This has to be, this has to be greater than or equal to zero because this cannot be a negative value, okay? We cannot have more than our capacity. We cannot use more than our capacity. So it has to be just zero. And then we do the same for our, this ointment. It has to be then greater than or equal to zero, okay? Now let's think about the demand constraints here. We're going to put demand constraint and to put the demand constraint, we have calculated something like unmet demand. So our unmet demand is simply, it means actual demand, actual demand minus serve demand. The demand that has been served from the production plants, okay? So let's say again, if we consider a situation like this, 100 minus, uh, let's say when we have to meet the demand, then we have to meet this 100 actual demand. Actual 100 has to be served. So then we will be left with zero, okay? So normally that's the constraints we normally use that, okay, unmet demand, we select all of them and say it has to be equal to zero. But let's say our actual demand is 100, but we serve more than 120, more than 100. So we serve 120. So we will have minus 20. Is that a problem? In the case of demand, it's not really a big problem because we will just put this in our in our in our inventory. Okay. But it's a problem in a sense that it is going to increase our cost. But sometimes for Excel to solve, often we use like uh, zero or less than equal to zero. Negative is okay too. So sometimes we use that, but we will try not to use it. We will always try to use this one that unmet demand has to be equal to zero. Demand has to be met, okay? But then can we have situations like this? 100 minus 80, that's demand served is less than what is actual demand. So we are actually having stock out or backlog. We are having a stock out or backlog. So in this case, actually, we try to avoid this situation. We don't want this situation. We don't want a stock out. Both of them are feasible, okay? Whether demand is equal to zero or demand is, unmet demand is equal to zero or unmet demand is less than equal to zero. Both are feasible, but this is not feasible at all. So we will try to use first with the equal to, but if it doesn't work, we try to uh, do it with the less than equal to. So here then we select our unmet demand cells, and then we say that it has to be equal to zero. And then we do the same here for the uh, unmet demand cells here, and we say it has to be equal to zero, okay? And then we also have to say that these plants, open or not, they are binary, okay? At and also then this one has to be also binary. And in this question, question one, part one of uh, part one of the question two here, they say that you know we have to have Chicago plant open. We can't really close it immediately. So we actually have to have this cell here. We have to have this one equal to one because this plant open or not, it can take only zero and one, and one means plant is open. So we have to have it open one. Also this one here for Chicago, it has to be also equal to one. And then, okay. So then this is how it looks like our setup for optimization. We have mainly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mainly eight constraints. And we are going to see the solution we get with these eight constraints, okay? 
And here we are going to use the nonlinear. Uh, the linear one is not going to work here. Okay. Let's solve. Let's see what we get. We see our optimization is running. Let's hope that we will get some results with uh, not so weird. So it took like about one minute or something like that. And then we got result. This result, 86,315,000. Actually, this, this is a valid result. This is almost the lowest we could get. And here, if you see, we have the Chicago open for uh, wipes. And then we can also have Princeton and Los Angeles open. Okay. Uh, how much we deliver from Princeton to which demand locations and how much we deliver from Los Angeles to which demand location we can see here. For ointment, we simply keep the one, the Chicago one open, okay, so that's it. And here we see the cost is slightly lower, about, about 1.5 million, uh, yeah, about something like that, about 1.5 million. Here we have 86 million, 315, here we have 87 million, 1.5 million lower here, okay. So actually we see that having some other plants open could be a useful solution, okay? Great. Now let's move to the part two of this question, okay? Where we say that, okay, assume, uh, assume that uh, wh where we see that, okay, transportation co costs are half of its current value. So how the solution is going to be affected. I'm going to clean this text here because we don't need it anymore, okay? So now to answer the second part, I'm simply going to duplicate this one. Move to end, create a copy and yeah, create a copy. And I'm just going to rename it as part two, okay? And here it say that, you know, we have to make this transportation cost double. Uh, one way of making it could be that uh, we, 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 what we will do normally, we will use something called multiplier. Okay. Let's say we put a value of one. Okay. Here, it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be, it's, it's just a number. It's just a number and that should be okay. And in this case, by the way, you have to also make sure like if you're using a Norwegian keyboard and Norwegian Excel, I guess for number, you will normally have one comma zero zero, not one dot zero zero. Okay, so you have to check which version you're, which keyboard and which version of Excel you are using. Okay. So yeah, it's okay to keep it up to two digits. So now one idea could be that we go here and multiply each of them with with this one, <laughs> but that will take some time. So I will, I will actually do a small shortcut. I'm just going to move this up, select it, move it up. Okay, I'm going to move it up. Then I'm going to copy this whole thing. And I can actually copy this whole thing here. And then I'm going to remove all of it from here. And I'm going to start a function then this i'm going to fix it with a four or you can put the dollar symbols and i'm going to multiply this with this one okay so when the multiplier value is equal to one i have to drag it first down and then i have to drag it this way so you see when the multiplier value is one we have the same cost as the original costs but if we put it two, all our costs are doubled. Okay, but first in for this part, we have to solve it for 0.5, half of it. So we put 0.5, our transportation costs are now half of what they were. Now we go to data, we go to solver. The thing is we are not going to do anything. We're just going to click solve.
and it's going on. So in this case here, we got about 75 million, um, 524,700. So it took about like one minute to solve and then we got this solution, which is a pretty good solution, I think. You, even if you get slightly different solution, you will get something close to it, okay? If sometimes one idea could be just to remove all the solution from here, okay? And run it again to double check, okay? So yeah, let's say if we do that as we are already here. So if we do that and we click on solve, Let's see what we get. I think it's going to take again about one minute or something like that. So after doing that, it took again one minute, about something one minute, and then we got this solution, 74,807. So, and here we actually just keep the Chicago open, everything else yeah, closed is okay. So it's a slightly improved result than the previous one where we had I think yeah, two of them open. But normally, when you retry, remove the decision variable cells and then re rerun it again. Okay, but I'm pretty sure that if you do it anymore, you will not get less than this. Okay, but you can give it a try. But now let's go to the part three. So where we're just going to duplicate this, move our copy, move to and create a copy. And then we just going to call it part three. Now here we have to consider double transportation cost. So we just put the multiplier on two and then our transportation cost has been doubled. Then maybe now from the beginning, we remove the answers for the decision variables. Remember that your other setups, they remain same, only the decision variables we remove, okay? Because sometimes if we leave it there, Excel just uh, consider it from the memory and use it uses the same again, okay? But normally, yeah it's a good idea to remove them. And then we are just going to click solve. So it took again about one minute and this is the solution we got, which is a pretty good solution, 106 million when the transportation cost is double. And everything looks okay, except for the fact that here we have a weird number but actually it's just zero, okay? If we just make it here to number, you see it's just zero. It came in different format, okay? So yeah, the results uh, look pretty nice, I, I think, okay? And now we will try the part three of, uh, question three of this case, okay?